Hello everyone, welcome to Red Summer Holdings, a real estate partnership comprising of eight owners, Tochi, myself, Zoe, Ramad, Charles, Ikechi, Chima, Innocent, and Ike. Here we discuss the evolution of our business, which shows you how group economics can be successful in regards to real estate. If you believe there is value in this information, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. With that being said, let's get to the content you've all been waiting for. Okay, to start, there was a... Uh... I was looking at um, properties. First of all, there's help. There's like 18 properties that fall into our basic under 80K in Memphis area that we can look at and talk about today. But there's a couple of things that we should go over, which the first thing is um, uh, the, what was it? The, like the top five things from the 40, or do you guys have uh, the top five things that you care about the most? So that we could basically bake it into the checklist that we have already. And then we can use that to go over the properties. That's like those are, that's kind of the first thing. It's like first through third thing. And then the thing we should end on is um, like our logo. Uh, I bought our I bought Red Summer Holdings URL and then uh, it's like a dollar. So just to hold it in, in case whenever we decide we want to use it or whatever. And then what um, basically what our, our brand looks like. So like we've been going over renditions. We should probably figure that out just to, a placeholder so we can put this up on like YouTube. Um, and then uh, I also had ideas about, or wanted to know what you guys thought about using our um, face emojis, like the animated versions of our face to put on for like a podcast and things like that. So uh, let's start with the, the list. Do you guys have the your top things that you care about? I can go first. Yeah, once you go first, you know. Yeah, okay. So um, my top things were, um, I cared about what kind of businesses or uh, retailers were moving in or have already moved, recently moved in, i.e. like a Starbucks or a Target or um, like a, what was the other one, McDonald's? Actually, McDonald's can be in any kind of class neighborhood, but uh, generally, like I, I thought like a Starbucks within a two-mile radius would be a good indicator. Um, the next thing I was thinking of was uh, how much supply of similar multifamily is coming online in the short and the midterm. Uh, and then also, has there been any crime at the particular property that we're looking at and how recently and what the crime was? And then, of course, why the seller is selling. Did you find that out? I think that is a major key in being able to negotiate on price. So those are the things that I cared about. I think that's four, but uh, those things matter to me most. Anybody else want to go ahead? Uh, to add to, to your list, I would say, I don't know if I had five, but um, a few of the ones that I was interested in is, is the neighborhood gentrifying? Um, is there hospitals nearby? And then the comparison of average rents for, you know, whatever unit mix um, to the salaries of the, like the average salaries in the neighborhood. How would you, um, how do you define gentrifying? Um, that's more of a qualitative feeling and I would say even some of the stuff you mentioned like say Starbucks and like say a Whole Foods opening by or Trader Joe's and like you can see like the city putting in work putting in work in the area like planting trees or like recobbling the the roads and stuff like that yeah so gentrification usually starts with like a bike lane and then new access that's yeah the, the, the primary if, you, if you if you notice the city's paying attention to that area yeah in terms of like infrastructure Exactly. So like Ike said, repaving the roads and bike lanes, that's like the number one thing. Is there a way to, um, cause I would, I would think that like, if the city is paying attention to it, then it's already started. Is there a way to tell before? I think when, uh, this is more qualitative in terms of like when educated non white people start moving there. Right. Because you're like, in a place where I'm comfortable, like I'm comfortable in a place where it's like, quote unquote, hood adjacent, like I'm okay with it, because the rent's cheap and I can live there and it's fine. Um, but when people like me start moving there, that's the hint, like, okay, this is about to go up. Because I, I, I can speak for myself in New York, um, like I was living uptown in Washington Heights and uh, 
um, my rent was cool. Obviously, I moved, but like now it's the rent's different. Like the condos are going up there, and um, I moved back to New York like five years ago, and it was good, but now it's it's not, right? So, and this is by Columbia University uptown. So, so for, for me, seeing that like okay, this was good for me, but now as more white people are coming there, we have like there's a beer garden there now that was not there before. Um, it definitely was not a Starbucks, and now the, I mean there was a Starbucks that was a little further away, but that was close to Columbia. So that one was a, it's hard to use that one as a metric because that was more for the people who worked at Columbia. Like Columbia was there, um, but most people didn't live there. They lived in Harlem, so I lived further further up. So like, so when people like I'll say like, especially um, educated non-white folks that are moving in, that's that's a, a qualifier that I, I could use. And I, I would that's, say that's like a pretty good point. I, I never even thought of that, like in terms of like a precursor. Because I'm like, you don't know until the city starts paying attention. But but actually, given that criteria, like and applying that to just personal experience in Los Angeles, I think that makes a lot of sense. I would say that like th those are, those are great hints. But at the end of the day, since we're not going to be in the area, you know, for extended periods of time, we're going to have to rely on brokers and property managers that know the area really well. And the, the best of that group are going to be the people that go to like the city council meetings and talk to people at, in the city and, and are obviously transacting in the area so they know where people are moving. So if we can get a good sense from people on the ground, that would help as well. So like talk to brokers? Like real estate agents, brokers, property managers, people that are, are, are you know, operating in that area, you know, very often and see and actually see the, the movement. Um. Also, like on for an engineering standpoint, I think at least in California, I know for any new project, they put it on their website for upcoming projects. So maybe we can look at you know the city of Memphis or that area and see if there's new developments coming in the near future. That's and that can determine whether it's changing if the city is uh, having involvement within that community, that area. That's another thing. And to at this point, right, there are eight of us. So if eight of us put out a few phone calls to a specific city and just talk to the agents in that and that's it to see what they say about what, what gentrifying, and we just take the average of what they say and just pick, pick those areas, right? We just put a few calls out, see what people say on the average, and then make a decision from there. Yeah, is, uh, is the word gentrifying the word we should use? Uh, just maybe, maybe up where, where up and coming, uh, people, are, people are renting a lot more. Average rent in different areas. Um, where do they advise people to invest? We'll just pick up a few questions and. Like uh, I can say, when I when I started investing in Arizona, I found a broker and we just sat on the phone for like an hour and went over Google Maps and he just you know drew, uh, drew over the areas that were like up and coming, working class, you know, uh, upper class, literally just all over the phone on Google Maps for like thirty minutes to an hour. So if all of us did that, we would we would get an idea, a really good idea, I think. Of what's good over there. I think that's a really good point. Good point. <clears throat> Does anybody else have uh, other stuff? Or I can, were you done? Oh, yeah, I'm done. I'm done. Um, I agree with all of those ones. Those are all solid um, points. I think, in addition, we should, it's not priority, priority, but we should also consider opportunity zones because opportunity zones essentially mean that, like, the city or the county or whatever are highly invested in those areas to develop. And so with that being said, they might offer, um, they might give you additional like incentives to build in those areas. Generally they're like historic areas that the county doesn't want to see like fade or go away and they want it to continue to remain a big symbol in that community. <clears throat> in addition, I guess there's fancy ways to like, uh, finance your deals when it comes to opportunity zones. Like if, let's say for example, I have a whole bunch of stocks or whatever, instead of um, using the capital gains um, or getting taxed on the capital gains, you could use your um, stock money essentially to um, invest in those areas without having to get taxed on it. So that's another good incentive to look at opportunity zones. I, I agree with everything that you guys said though, other than that. Yeah, I think for me, I think I have one way to submit it, I mean, because they're trying to mitigate the individual risk of an individual renter not paying their rent. So I think one 
a good metric would be to figure out the, I mean, we find out the average and the median salaries in, in Memphis on whatever zip code we're thinking about and trying to find and just calculating what percent of the income a given renter is paying towards their rent um, just on average, right? So the lower that number is, the, the less chance that they will be like it's defaults on their, I mean, they would like to not pay their rent on time. Um, just, just on average, like for a given zip code, like what's the, you know, what's the chance of each rent to pay your rent? Um, and similar to what I said, uh, who said, yeah, about hospitals nearby, I, was, I guess just large, large employers nearby. So within say 15 miles or so. Um, when we touched on this before, I think Memphis is pretty good on the, on the whole weather thing. Um, I, I don't think there's no, you know, there's no earthquakes, no fires. But are there floods in Memphis? I don't yeah, know. that's what I was gonna ask. Flood zones. Is, yeah, know, there, flood zone. There are there are some flood zones like near the Mississippi River, but that's like basically like downtown adjacent. So so where the neighborhoods are that we'd be looking at are, are pretty far from it. Um, so I think our risk is, is pretty mitigated from that. Okay. Also, they have tornadoes there. I huh? guess I, I'm pretty sure they had a tornado this year in Memphis area. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm not sure. That seems super rare, though, because like just just from a geography standpoint, like you get tornadoes where there's just no ge geographic features because the wind just picks up and picks up. Um, I hadn't really heard that because there's there's like a little bit of hills and like uh, there's obviously like the the Mississippi River and stuff. I I, I hadn't heard of there being a, a big deal tornado over there, but I mean, maybe I don't know. Yeah, might have been uh, somewhere else in Tennessee. I, I agree with you. It's not like a you know, it's not like there's tornado season or anything like that, but just something to keep in the back of your mind. They, I mean, just Google says there's just a few tornadoes touched on the other, so. Gotcha, okay, cool. I think, should we also consider like how uh, the age of the property? Like we don't want anything, make sure it's not too old. I guess that's- I think that's, I think that's a, a really good point. It'll be tough though in our price point to find stuff that's like newish, I think a lot of what we're going to see is like probably like 50s and 60s construction um okay. but yeah i would put a premium on something that's like at least from the 80s but what's crazy is that's like that's about to be 40 years <laughs> you know what i mean like and time is going by but but yeah I, in our price point we're probably going to be looking at stuff that's that's older than that I care more that, um, I mean, the structure can be old, but like when the last time, you know, the roof or the pipes or oh, you know, the foundation, sure. foundation or the pipes were touched is like more, it's, it's more indicative of whether you'll have problems or not. You know what I mean? You can have an old ass house, but if things have been redone recently, which is like what they ask for in like whenever we um, are reading up on insurance, like they ask the age of the house, and then they also ask for when's the last time you know you touched the elect electrical, your plumbing, and the roof. Those are like three things that uh, insurance companies, property insurance companies, care about. Actually, just occurred to me we should probably look at that list, or I should probably go over that list of the things that they like their own checklist. Because like if we approached our purchase as like an insurance company, which basically yeah. should. Uh, you know, one thing what for. based on this, right, one thing that comes to mind is like whenever I'm buying properties, like the records are always just trash, right? Like if you get a rent roll, it'll be like written on paper or like just an email, or like something like not reliable. And then if you want maintenance records, it's even worse. If yeah. we if we can distinguish ourselves, like when it's time to sell um, or get more investors by just having like crazy detailed notes and like having pay for every single property being like, hey, this is when the roof was done. This is what we spent on electrical. This is what was done. This is what was done. That'll really, really, really like kind of set us apart because um, especially in that market, but even still kind of in general, I'm, I feel like there's so much, the more information anybody has in a real estate transaction, the more comfortable they're going to be. And, and like the record keeping process is just not very good. Like even when you want to buy a house, like there's a whole industry dedicated to title research like how is how is the title of a house not clearly like known at any given moment but like if, if we do a really really good job of that um i think that'll set us up for success as we continue to grow even for the appraisal period if we were to refinance um appraisers if you if you furnish them with all that information you got a better shot 
of getting you know a better value on, on the back end of an appraisal. So that having records, it, it can't really hurt you. So we might, might as well do it. Yeah, it's 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 just it's about us having process, right? Because that's the thing. Like we're not going to be really doing any of this ourselves. We're going to be relying on vendors. So like if we don't take a proactive step, our process will only be as good as theirs. So we're going to have to like impose a process for them to follow to make sure that, you know, like you said, we're going to have all these um, like tools at our disposal when it's time to sell, when it's time to refinance, whatever the case might be. So wait, because that's like, uh, we should talk more about this process. Like what, sh what should the process look like? Because I imagine, uh, first of all, that we, since there's like many of we basically all are partners. I mean, we are partners, but we're also, you know, um, beholding to each other in terms of records. So simply because we're, there's eight of us and we're all in different areas, like I imagine that we'll have to keep uh, our records in like the central place. But uh, as far as you're saying about process, like is that with our relationship with like property managers? You mean and like the standards that they have for their record keeping, or you mean literally individual, like each plumber we deal with each. Uh, I think like, it's it's you want to have as much information as possible so that you can make good decisions. And I'll I'll, I'll I'll kind of break it down like this, right? So you know, let's say we have ten properties, and you know, at very different times we've had to have plumbing issues, and we've used three different plumbers. I'm make it a bigger example. We have a hundred properties, right? Over time, you should see, oh, like, you know, and this is stuff that I've done for people. For every activity you log when it was uh, first reported, you log how long the plumber took to finish the, to complete the thing, how much it costs. So you should be able to see like an analysis over time of like, oh, well, whenever we have leaks in the kitchen, these guys can respond quickly. They pay, you know, the cost is, is, is low. So like, forget about us choosing between five different plumbers. These are our guys that we go to for kitchen issues. But these guys, like they're good for roofing issues or whatever. So like just the more data you have and having that complete picture and being able to tie it to who the vendor, who, what's the vendor that did the service? What's the specific area of the house that had the issue? You know, what's the particular property that had the issue? Shoot, even like what time of year, like all these, all these data points and like, you know, with this is getting way ahead of ourselves, but like even with like, um, when, but, but when you get big, these are the types of areas where you can have like a real a, a real edge, right? If you're doing this kind of analysis with like machine learning and stuff of like, oh, like, well, if it's winter time, then your pipes are gonna fucking burst. Sorry for cussing. Your pipes are gonna burst if the house is like between this age and this age, you know, because you just have so many data points to where you can almost predict that sort of thing. And then it's almost like you never have downtime. Cause, you know, in any business, if you have downtime on your revenue generating asset, that's going to kill you, it throws off your model. So like preventative maintenance, like all the rental car companies, you know, they don't ever wait for the check engine light to go on. They like maintain their cars like they clockwork know. because yeah. they know, right? So so if we can adopt that same kind of approach and it's going to feel like overkill in the beginning when we only have like, you know, a handful of properties, but I definitely think it'll pay dividends when we when we continue to grow. And to just add, just to add a quick note to that, like, Having that information and being able to do that analysis on really easily and effectively with our own properties will make it that much easier to find value or someone else is not doing it with their property so that we can apply our techniques and extract, you know, more NOI and increase the value of a property simply because we're running it the way that we're supposed to be running it as opposed to 100%. Like yeah, if, you, if, if, if we find like existing properties that have like a 40% expense ratio, but we know like our process is so good on any property, we can run it at like 28% expense ratio. We can buy all the crap that nobody wants at to list. look at. Yeah. yeah, we can buy all the crap nobody wants to look at and, and and we'll just be eating, you know? What does that look like? So, so the two of you specifically, you know, already have purchased out of state and deal with the property manager. So what does that look like when you're dealing with them on, you know, these incremental like statistics about a property? Because I can imagine how I could do it because I'm managing the properties. So like anything I decide, I can just do it, to be honest. But if I'm dealing with somebody who already has a process and much less somebody who's out of state, like do you, do we need to like build basically like a manual for how to operate with us? And then like, if you can't do this, then that'll basically cancel you out. Or how does that work? How's it going uh, with your, your property managers basically? Well, I would go as far as I wouldn't go as far as to say that we need to have like a, a whole you know manual built out. It's more um, 
on the front end, the inter interview process where you sort of set the guidelines and precedent where, hey, look, I expect, you know, on a monthly basis to get a statement that outlines all the expenses for the property with photos if, you know, it's a, it's a property turn or <clears throat> I expect whenever someone gets, uh, so when someone rents the, a unit, they fill out, you know, one of those rental sheets that show what's wrong with the unit, right, like within the first couple of weeks or first couple of days. And then also, you know, setting a precedent on communication saying, okay, if we're in the middle of turning a unit, I need to be able to get an update on how that's going every, you know, so period. And I, I need to, you know, get estimates at a certain amount of time. And just the, the amount of communication needs to be a little more than if the person was, you know, within reach of you physically, because there is that, that, that barrier or not necessarily barrier, but there is that distance in, in, in the uh, in where you are versus where they are and their access to the property versus your access to the property so you have to make up for that with over communicating with the, the property manager yeah um and i would say like one of the ways that um a client i had before the way they did it was hey you don't get paid until you submit after photos so like for any any work order like and that's just just any vendor they dealt with right like you don't get paid until you submit the after photos, we sign off on it, and then you'll get your check wired to you or you'll get, you know, whatever the payment method is agreed to. So, you know, that's that's a simple thing, right? People always need an incentive to, to kind of work with your process. And then I would say also, I think a little bit of it falls on us, right? So I'm thinking about like, you know, cause I get statements from my property manager that says, oh, you know, it's just a line item and it may or may not, it's usually attributed to a property, but it's not detailed. It will just be like plumbing, you know, 80 bucks, but like, it's kind of, it's a little bit on them to communicate it, but it's on me to like log it appropriately. Oh, yeah. Well, Hey, this was the kitchen, you know, um, this thing burst because, you know, I don't know, the pipe hadn't been replaced in 50, in 40 years, you know, for example, or like, you know, you know, you do a water heater stuff. It seems like all the time, but like, Hey, like this is a crap brand, like putting as much detail as you can, because you'll never like all those, all those insights are going to be really, really helpful. Like, you know, in today's world, like you can never have too much information because you can glean insights that you just wouldn't know. Right. Like we might find out that like, you know, tankless water heaters, even though they're slightly more expensive, that's the way to go because they last way longer. Or even this particular brand of water heater, like all those kinds of things, like you'll only know if you have enough information and you're tracking it over time. I, I think, uh, which is a thing I didn't think about before personally, is that like we own what we manage. So there's like a blurred line there. It's like the, I can make a decision as a manager and it automatically benefits me as an owner. But I've never considered like the relationship with a manager, much less wherever, not even necessarily because they're close. Because I feel like uh, once we get this system right, then I'll probably apply it to even the ones the property is close to me because it doesn't make any sense for me to be using my legs when I can just use my brain. But uh, uh, it's gonna like, especially you two, I'm, I'm gonna follow your lead in terms of relationships with management and like understanding what it is that we need to communicate on and get the numbers on. But that's something that I didn't even think about till just now, actually. And, and like a, a final note on that is like, you can always underwrite pretty much anything into the expenses of a property. You could even underwrite, say like 10% in people just screwing you over, like a contractor, uh, you know, taking too much time so the renter doesn't get rented, that's another month out, or, you know, them buying faulty equipment, just like there's, there's gonna be some gray area where you're gonna get screwed. So if you underwrite that into the expenses of the property, then you're not really being surprised. Okay. Does anybody else have any uh, things that they care to like add? I think we've had like probably had, like maybe six things that we'll probably add into the criteria list. Would uh, just take a little note. I'm gonna paste it in the chat what everyone said. So you know, so businesses in the area, supplies of you know multi-family units, crime, and why the seller's selling. I said uh, gentrification, and we had a conversation about what that means. Uh, hospitals nearby, uh, comparison of the rent uh, unit mix to the, to the average in the area, and salaries in the neighborhood. Um, and I added, uh, I guess, want to know what percent of the salary uh, the rent is paying towards rent. Uh, nearby large employers, once what I said, uh, talked about flood zones, um, and Chuck said that wasn't big of an issue. 
And I guess I'll just add proper appreciation in the area and room to grow. And she's all brought up issues about city zones and financing and how that could create, you know, uh, access to better financing. Um, from my I, also, I also wanted to add, uh, I also wanted to add to that. It's like, because the opportunity zones are the places that the counties or you know the communities are focusing on that goes hand in hand with like the up and coming you know um, I guess areas and a location. So I think that's why I also brought that up as well. Cool. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> My book, uh, <laughs> the newer newer builds, um, and then that went on to a conversation about, you know, specifically not just the age of the building, but also the last times things were done, uh, updated. So plumbing, roofing, electrical. And then we had this conversation about Chuck for this idea about properties with good maintenance records, how that can be used as a way to differentiate itself from other companies, but also how that should be one of the criteria that we look for. And that's where we are at this point. Do, do all the other ratios just go without saying? You know, we talked about like quote unquote expense ratios, I like, think the one percent rule, the two percent rule, all those things just go without saying. Yeah, those are already in inside the uh, criteria. Because all these things will just be added to to the thing we've already built, to be honest. Um, and we can look at some today, but I didn't uh, go and like break them down because everybody knows it takes like a few hours at this point. But um, I don't know. I don't. We'll deal with uh, what we're going to do for next meeting later. But the next thing that uh, I want to go over was basically we should actually switch it and talk about like the branding and the logos and all of that right now. Then we can look at a few properties and then we'll pretty much figure out what it is we want to do in between now and the next meeting and then we're done. But um, so we have like several renditions of the logo. And I think the newest ones, like the one I came in with, like a triangle above the red summer holdings, which I'm fine, honestly, with all of them. Like, I really, I know none of us professionals. It doesn't really, I just need something to point to when we are, when we are building our, so I say that to say, this is why I came to this. So the other things on the list were looking at property managers in the area, right? And then looking at like lending institutions, credit unions. And then I thought about how well, we would approach them, what we have to say, and we could simply just have our website and have our bios there, have our plan there. We're not hiding anything. So we could do um, today, we can figure out like our little intros should just be like a paragraph each, doesn't need to be that um, that deep because uh, the money will talk for itself and the plan will talk for itself. But uh, I got the URL, probably we'll build like a, a square space, which means we'll need like our pictures and our bios and we'll need a logo, whatever the logo is, I really don't care as long as it's uh, it says Red Summer Holdings. It's pretty much yeah. Yeah, on the logo, man. I, any the simple, I like some simple and plain, like just the name, bold letters. You know, keep it simple. We should have one that's like, like that'll fit in a square. That'll fit in a square, and then we should have another one that's like kind of everything spelled out. But I'm not. I don't think we should. Uh, we should be able to close this topic out today. On our, in all honesty, like just, yeah. just. What was the thing you said? Something square. You said, said something square. We, we should have a version of the logo that fits cleanly in a square. Oh. Okay. And then we should have a version that's like you know can have whatever shape we want it to be. But like there should be yeah. a version that's just a, a clean square. Yeah. There should be so, yeah. So so a small like, like obviously like a square and then one like the one that you know had before where it says rest of my holding then it's like a real estate holding company on the bottom something like that mm -hmm. um you should have different versions of it same same color um same font however we do it um so maybe like two or three of them but and then we use them in different places with different different things like if we have a letterhead or a website yeah. um yeah stuff like that I, um, yeah, sure. oh go ahead go ahead I shared the link on Canva. Uh, Canva will do it automatically for it, like anything, like postcards, Instagram posts, uh, I don't know, any stationery you have, like it'll format it for whatever it is you want. And the link, I, share, I don't know what I share, I must have shared it in the WhatsApp. Um, okay. Anybody can alter it there. But I just use a, a red color, like standard red and Times New Roman, just to keep it as simple as possible. So any rendering program should be able to deal with that. But uh, if you, if, we guys, if we decide to keep the triangle, then 
I don't know how to do that on Canva, so like I can do that. Just standardize it there, and then we'll just run with that. Or we can keep. I don't. I, I really don't care as long as it's a restaurant holding. Because like I was thinking that even if we have the restaurant holding with the line, then um, that gives us the opportunity to expand. So it could be red summer holding. It could be like you know, um, uh, in property like real estate investment group. The financial services, like tax services, you can put anything under there. That's what I was thinking when I had the line. Uh, but uh, other than that, I don't really care. And then as far as like for like our social media and YouTube channel, um, uh, it depends on which way you want to go. If you want to like keep it like professionalized, um, then we would still use a straight line red summer holding. But then we're we're just like a group of guys who meet every other Sunday. So I was thinking we should use our like everybody sent me a screenshot of their face, the animated version of their face. Then we just like render it somehow where it's like the eight of us. Um, and then we just post that and that'll be like our YouTube channel and our Instagram face. What do you guys think about that? Or do you want to keep just resting and holding red? Uh, yeah, I agree with everything everyone said. <laughs> yeah. Someone mute their camera if they're listening to the sports. What was that? Somebody's listening to sports. Just mute their mic, please. That was Chima. I just muted it. Oh. <laughs> 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 I'm trying to regulate on them. <laughs> but yeah. So yeah, let's just go because you could change it, right? You could change it. So let's just put some shit up there and we're solid. Like, or we can do both. Later. So, like, let's keep, keep the, the simple red. Yeah, summer. I agree with you. Let's keep change it. Oh, say it again. I agree with Zoe. We can change it later. We just need, we just need something for now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. None of us are uh, graphic designers. Yeah. So we can just do it. Like, um, actually, you know what? I'm just gonna put the rest of the holdings. But can you guys send me your faces? Or do you not like that idea? If you don't I like mean, all of us have iPhone like faces or whatever. You just send those things. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Or most of us. Most most of us. She about to have iPhone. I mean, I'm sure Samsung does the like the caricatures, right? Yeah, Actually, I think your phone does that. There's Bitmoji and shit. There's, there's way. I'll, I'll just make one for him. Who cares? I'll just make one for him. <laughs> <laughs> I have a Bitmoji, right? Same shit, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah same shit. Yeah, that, yeah. That. No, but if it doesn't look the same, bro, I don't think Bitmoji no. is the same as the uh, iPhone face. Yeah, somebody, <laughs> somebody can make one for him. Basically, yeah, has an iPhone. I have one. It's, it's an iPhone. What is it? iPhone 8 or some shit? Does it do it? My work phone's iPhone. Yeah, yeah, your work phone does it. Yeah, you should be able to do it. I could do it. I'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll just do that. Um, then by the end of the, I don't know, whenever we get them all in and then I have like some time, I'll just put them all, I'll use the same thing. I'm, I'm, I'm going to use uh, Canva and just do it. And then I'll put it on the YouTube channel and then put up these two, this one in our last meeting. And then uh, I guess we can put it on for the Instagram too and take uh, Dave Chappelle's grand, granddaddy or grand uncle off. Um, but yeah, that'll be that. And then, uh, what was the other thing? Uh, oh, and also a little, what do you guys think we should say in our little blurb? It should be simple, like uh, who you are, where you're from, what you do, uh, and then- uh, Talk about the bios? Yeah, talk about the bios. Uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm thinking now that like, we probably should have, but there's no, point right now for like uh different roles because we've all basically done the same type of analysis at this point i think we'll just leave it we just need to have something and then i also will uh, talk like positions yeah because like within it because they, there's like you know there's accounting asset management property management background blah 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 blah, blah. a bunch of like buzzwords in real estate that all mean basically either your like counting numbers and doing values, uh, finance, or you actually taking care of the property like on a day-to-day -day basis. That's essentially so, what it is. So let me ask this question and that'll, that'll help us figure out how to, how to craft the bios. Is our intention to present ourselves like, hey, we're this really mature, like established, like big shot company? If that's the case, then we should, it should be collectively, right? You know, we have, you know, 70 years experience in real estate because you know your family's been doing it and you're 32 years old i you're 30 
30, 31. I don't know how old you are. 30, yeah. You know, I've been doing real estate for like five years. You know, though you, you know, like you can, you can just throw everything and make us look as, as big as possible. Or do you want to make it like, hey, like you're going on this journey with us. Like here we are, like everybody here is born in the 80s and like we're stepping into like this journey and, and we're, you're, you're going to come along with us and we're, you're, you're going to learn everything that we learn and we're going to show you. I think answering that question first is going to help us craft the bios in a way that makes sense. Yeah, I, I think I prefer the latter. I think you're trying to, at least from my perspective, right? I think it's trying to say that it's not something like we're starting out on this journey, just take the journey with us. I prefer that angle versus uh, we're big and bad because we're, I mean, we're new, right? So, I, so if that's the case, then we can just say like, you know, I don't know who bought the first property, but like, hey, collectively, like, you know, we bought our, you know, the individuals in this thing have, you know, got into real estate and, and have individually, right? And have gotten together based on a shared mutual interest and a strong personal relationship. Um, you know, starting with buying our first property and I bought mine in 2017. I'm not sure when, when uh, anybody else bought theirs. And then we kind of craft the story more like that. Like, yo, you're, 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 like you said, you're coming along with us and, and we're not shy about hiding the information, right? Cause you know, everyone knows the internet guru who makes it sound like they had some mystical thing that, that, that figured it out for them. It's more like, Hey, no, we applied like common sense, you know, common sense approach to like get money and like, figuring out how to get ahead with the real estate thing and like just come on the journey with us i like i like the um the uh ladder because if we're if we're trying to market ourselves to lps and just people in general like on in the social media space the ladder sounds more relatable like if if we're posing ourselves as oh we've been doing this for 70 years and someone's just trying to get in on, you know, property number one, it, it seems almost overwhelming for them. So I feel like the, the latter point that you made is more relatable for Okay. People. And then I mean, if, if that's the case, then I think we should have a, I don't think we need eight bios. I think we should have one like collective, and it's almost not even a bio, but it's like one collective story <laughs> that we're telling. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think we need eight individual buyers. I agree with that. I agree with that. I would just say you could have the thing that he says mm -hmm. eight members of the eight GPs. All you need is a name. I don't know if you need an age. Name, age, location. You could say occupation if you want, but that's probably it. Okay. I'll, uh, you probably don't need age. It'll probably just be like, um, yeah. just name and your professional occupation. And then, uh, then I can just, write a story i know i i'm pretty much essential here i know everybody yeah we'll we'll, yeah. we'll workshop it right like just put it on the google sheet and then everybody can comment you know make slight changes whatever okay. yeah i mean you could just honestly just do it and just have everyone's name and just a general partner yeah but what about the pictures yeah. though the visuals so yeah, yeah with, with the emojis a bit bit emojis or whatever like the meme emojis whatever they oh, call the them emojis? No, 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 that's, that's, no, that's no, just something no, we, we use on social media there. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. So what, what I, I do have one for the record. Just <laughs> <laughs> I do have one. Haters. We gotta see the we gotta <laughs> Honestly, we're talking about the internet. I'm thinking we're dappered up in suits, man. That's what I'm thinking. Or some sort of professional business wear. Because at the end of the day, uh, well no, at the end of the day, we're 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 trying to get money from credit unions. We're actually, we might be speaking to doctors, et cetera, et cetera. If this isn't we, Bitmojis, like, are, are they going to take us seriously? I don't think it should be Bitmojis, but like, no. if we have just regular pictures, credit unions will do it. They'll run the analysis just like we will. And we have doctors in here. So like, yeah. that's part of the, like the beauty of this group is like, there's, there's something for everyone here. So like, yeah. There's really no reason to, you know. Yeah, we, we, we have to be chameleons, right? Like, you know, for a certain audience, you know, it's casual, it's it's approachable, it's you know, oh, they did it, I can do that too. They're like me. For other for others, it's oh, these guys know what they're doing, right? So yeah. these guys are professional. So you kind of have to like pick and choose when to show what face. But I mean, we know that's so, I mean we've been doing this for our whole lives, right? Like <laughs> Yeah. that's how you get along yeah. in the world so. yeah i agree 
I agree with that, but I think we also like far as time, like for right now, I think we should, we could do the emojis and have it like more conversational and more fun. And people are like going with this, with this journey we're on. But when we really, I guess it's like our second or third property and we really want people to take us serious, maybe we should, like we said, upgrade everything, get a real design logo, get real professional bios with like a professional picture with a suit or something like that. But I think for right now, I think it's cool to keep like conversational. <laughs> I don't think as long as, as long as a track suit counts as a suit, I'm in. <laughs> yeah. You, you, you got to be careful with that, right? Because because a suit can be intimidating to certain audiences, right? It's like what are you? What is like what are we trying to? Who who are we trying to approach? The suit may be good for the bank, but the suit may not be good to get the everyday person on social media, you know, right? Or might not, you know, the random person might just look online and see 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 y'all doing your thing. And you're like, ah, uh, you know, this is an doesn't work for me. So it's like, how are we trying to position ourselves? Like, that might be good for investors and in, in the, on the, on the and creditors on the bank side, but not for the everyday person. So it depends on how we're trying to move. I mean, they're not, they're not mutually exclusive things, right? They're not mutually exclusive. You could do both, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Picture and then you get emoji for the Instagram and like whatever. I'm assuming for, for uh, social media, we'll just do the emojis. But I'm talking about for our website, like yeah. emojis.com, yeah. where we. No, nah, uh, you don't. You don't put that on the website, now. Nah. Yeah. Right. So what do we put on the yeah, website? Yeah. Just a just team okay. bio, right? Team bio, yeah, headshot, think, name, occupation. That's it. That's it. So can you guys send me headshots? Basically, the, are you sending me your Instagram like profile picture okay. or your LinkedIn profile picture? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's my. That's my. Is, is, is it weird <laughs> that I don't think we need our pictures up? Oh, you don't think we need to uh, have pictures up for the thing, just names? I don't think any of that matters. And none of them on the truck. website. <laughs> like on the on the social media. What do you put on the website then? <laughs> you literally put like our logo, you literally put like what we're into, and you literally put a contact us thing, and it's a web form. That's it. Actually, you know, here's the thing. Again, it depends on how we're trying to move. I've seen it done Chuck's way where like you don't see anyone's picture, or you see the information number, contact them if you need something. Like that's it. Like it's very plain, bare bones, but you know exactly what they do. Um, yeah. And then I also seen it where it's like spelled out, you have pictures and everything. So it, it depends on how you're trying to move on, where you're comfortable yeah. with. I mean, we're not realtors, right? So if it's a, you want to see a realtor's face. Right? Yes, exactly, so exactly. So we're not really, our personality is not the thing that's driving matter. the website. Our personality yeah. is what drives the social media. Like that's where, you know, you know, we should be ourselves, I feel that. so to speak, you know? Like so a website's just a, team a, website's a, a website's a business card, basically. Like that's what a website is. In yeah. right. It's a contact, it's a contact information. All right, then I'll do that um, too. So the website, and then that was basically it as far as that. And then there's, um, I looked right now on realtor.com, there's 18 properties that fall into our current criteria, not with the new things we just added, but. Um, we can look at a couple of those if you guys want. I think yeah, I think we should. Yeah, we should. Okay. Memphis? Yeah. Okay. Uh, cool. Oh, can you disable, no, post disabled attendee screen share? Can you enable it, please? Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. I want to change my name on this thing. Uh, Got it? Uh, <laughs> uh <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know the worst part of living in New York is having to tip everybody you come in contact with. You. <laughs> <laughs> right. so annoying. Wait, why you say that? Why do you have to tip everybody? Why made you even say that right now, sir? Because I'm doing it. <laughs> oh, I'm putting all these cards, thank you cards for all the the porters and the doormen and stuff. Oh, like oh, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy, man. You gotta give them like a Christmas bonus, right? I mean, yeah. Shouldn't the property management company do that? Wait, 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 wait like what? the building itself should well, do that. Well, because usually, right? like, usually they people own condos, right? So people that own condos basically own the building. Oh, so they, they yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's why you got to get a duplex, team. You got a duplex. <laughs> <laughs> get a, get a that, man. You got to tip everybody, yeah. But you need a duplex that, that with, the, with the yard that can actually, be something that can receive your packages. Because right now you're living in a place with a doorman. And that's great for your packages. But once you move to the duplex, they'll just leave your shit outside. So, your domain? Yeah, we have, I mean, our domain, they, they, ours is different, right? Because they, they accept it. 
Um, yeah. And it goes to like a resource center. I mean, we'll pick it up from there. But yours is, I don't know. It's anyway, so that's a, just a, what's a porter? What? That's the uh, guy who like brings your stuff upstairs, right? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Huh. So the hotel, the guys with the with the little like a bellhop with the cart. Yeah, yeah, bell bell hop, the, yeah. It's yeah. a bellhop in a place that you live, I guess. I got a question though, because um, this is. Uh, bothered me as well. When did tipping become mandatory? Yeah, and why is it? We should, here? We, should we, we should probably we should probably edit this out. By the way, yeah. <laughs> so like, was it cheap? No, no, bro. <laughs> but this is the whole point, right? right? One hundred percent real. I didn't want to make this real. My money now. I have to hide the fact that I'm I took somebody. They told me a price. I agreed to that. Do you, was, do you like it or you don't like it? But then think about it. Think about it though. Remember when we like whenever you go to Europe because you know you don't tip there. The services is. Is much much worse. It's in, trash. In the terrible. Service industry. Oh man, it's terrible over there. So like, I mean, well, if you enjoy good fine. service, then the tip's a tip. That's the yeah. thing. See, that's very good point. The, when we were in Europe, when we were in Amsterdam, yeah. they got mad that we wanted to tip them. They're like, "What are you doing?" You, but you the service was also like they were below mad. standard, though. But they here, take, take if service is they're, below they're... standard, <laughs> if service is below standard here, they you're still expected to tip. I no, go to the wrong restaurant. But you give him a, a bad tip <laughs> equivalent to the service. A bad tip is still a it's tip. Like a it's like a grade. It's like a grade. So, so my perspective is everyone doesn't get a, a living wage and no tipping. Just give everyone a, a living wage and don't tip anybody. Like, that's, that's it. That's common. I agree with that. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody agrees with that. It's, it's like you pay, some, you pay someone like $2 an hour. Like, wait, what? And then like, now you got to tip them to... To make up the but two dollars an hour is the market price. If no one was willing to work for two dollars an hour, you have to raise the price. Yes, but really, yeah. Don't say it's we're trying to work two dollars an hour. It's a little and messed up though. It's, it's really four dollars really an hour. Like you're lying. <laughs> no. That's All right. Yeah, yeah. You know, right. The market. The market's a little jacked up because unfortunately though. there are people willing to work for like, you know, literal pennies. You know what I'm saying? Like that's are they? Are they willing to work on paper pennies and then be mad at you? If you don't give a twenty percent tip, I mean that's the that's the whole beef with the living wage, right? Like, what is what is the standard of living that we should be that should like should a, should a, should an adult be able to work a minimum wage job and still maintain their own apartment? You can't do that in any city anymore. Like, like an yeah. adult working forty hours a week, making twelve dollars an hour, you can't afford an apartment in Los Angeles still. You'd have to take I, on roommates. I, you know what I'm I, saying? I and like that's the question: is should minimum wage be allowed? Like, should it be is minimum wage, hey, this is what we give, you know, teenagers or people who have help, or should minimum wage be, hey, you should be able to take care of yourself? That's the question we should answer as a society question. But minimum wage is just a floor price. So, like, if you raise minimum wage, you're going to tell everybody that's, the value. And that's why it's a standard of living, bro. Like, that's it's we're saying the same thing. A floor is all about a standard, right? The standard means, hey, look, by virtue of you living in this country, this is what you're allowed. Not allowed, but this is what, like, you're you're afforded. This is what you should be able to expect. So I agree that certain necessities should have a price floor, like like labor should have a price price floor. You shouldn't be able to hire somebody for like a dollar an hour, even if even if somebody was like shit out on the left and they were willing to take yeah. it. Like, nah, that's not cool. I understand what you, I mean. What you're saying makes sense, but what I'm saying though is that like implicitly, when you raise the value, the minimum wage value, that means the economy understands that this dollar is no longer worth the same dollar it was. But some this job, which has its same value, but the prices the prices increase, means that the, the value of the dollar is dropped. So prices just go up. Like that's that's not it. Every, everything should move in, in unison. You're assuming that, yeah, that, yeah. that that the minimum wage happens first, and then that forces everything else. What we're saying is everything else has already happened, so minimum wage should yeah. catch up to it. That's yeah. what we're saying. Minimum wage is way behind where things it's way behind, are bro. right now, right? Yeah. Yeah, minimum wage stays stagnant, I mean, but the, the price of bread keeps going up. The country, the answer though. is raising the minimum. I think that people's living wage should be raised. Like you should be able to to uh, live like a solid life off one job. I completely agree with that. But, but what the question I'm is saying, where, though. The question is where, because minimum wage across the country it, it can't be different. equal because in California yeah. the minimum wage is useless here. But if you live, you know, in a in a less populated, less coveted area, minimum wage is just fine. That's why, like, sure. in California, sure. there's a lack of uh, affordable housing because contractors can't afford to pay what's considered, you know, a living wage in California and also make money on the sale. 
but you can people yeah. are building in other parts of the world because and i mean people are building in california but it's luxury like affordable housing is yeah. almost you can't find it here right because yeah. it just costs too much so i mean minimum wage can't, it can't be a national discussion it has to be by region because not that, everybody wants to that is what it is though you know i agree i agree that. minimum wage right but then some people say no our minimum is 15 dollars an hour period right which is yeah. i think in san francisco they so can't say that because San Francisco is a very, a very liberal city. Like there, there are other places where they just stick to what the what the federal government says, even though it does not is not equal to what a living cost would be in that specific area. So it's, yeah, it's, so it's like a choice is being given to the to the to you know local governments, but only some are actually making the choice. Yeah. What is the crack though? Is the issue prices are too high, or the issue we're paying people too little? The issue is well, that people want to live where they can't afford to live. The yeah. issue, I think, we're, we're not paying people enough. In income. We're not paying people. There's like, like three people issues so happening at the same time. At the same time, people making so much money, right? So it's like it's just it's not it's not it's just the inequities are becoming worse, right? So like yeah. at the end of the day, it's, it's supply and demand, right? So if the demand is such in California where people are willing to pay a lot more, then some people are simply not going to be able to afford it because they don't have you know the dollars to to buy. So the, or, the supply and demand doesn't doesn't adhere to the rules of minimum wage. Like people, if people want it, people want that beachfront, even if it's a shitty condo, people are going to buy it, renovate it, whatever. But that person that could only afford it at, you know, 70% of list price and couldn't even make it habitable simply cannot live there. Yeah. That's, uh, and, there, that's, and there's, and there's gotta be, there's gotta be some kind of, um, we probably need like more varied housing types as well though. Like hmm? there should be like probably way more studios, right? Like if, if you're an adult and you want to live in a city, that's super expensive. You gotta like let go of that dream of having like your two bedroom apartment. Yeah, you know well, you, there, you gotta there you, are, can, you can afford a studio. There are like a, like uh, affordable housing that's subsidized by the government, where the government will give tax abatement to the owner if they keep the rents at like a certain level. But it just it's just not as prevalent as it needs to be for everybody to have a space. That's the thing. I think all that stuff is just like trying to solve a problem where like the obvious solution is like something nobody wants to stomach. You exactly. know what I'm saying? It's like, it's <laughs> so like, hey man, I'm unhealthy because I keep eating all this solution, crap. Jack? All right, we'll take what's this heart, heart attack medicine that'll give you seizures. And then you gotta take this other medicine that'll prevent the seizures. And you gotta take this other medicine to prevent the nausea from the seizures. And it's like, well, you could just like eat better. Eating better is expensive, right? So you don't have money to actually eat better. So you eat right, eating better is and, not. Yeah, yeah, and it's I'm way not, less I'm not, expensive I'm not, than all the medicine, though. It really is. <laughs> it's it's expensive. Expensive. It's it's expensive. 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 It's Actually, your, your healthcare is not expensive because it's already taken care of. Your healthcare is, is taken care of when you're on that low income level. It becomes an issue actually when you're in the middle class. That's when it's really hard. You have to be either super rich or super poor. If you're in the middle, you're screwed essentially. That's, so like, for that I person that. who's poor, it's not, it's not a big issue. And That's a good point, right? Access, but society still I mean, incurs that cost though, to be fair. Society still incurs that just, cost. Like, if it, like, for instance, like when I lived uptown, right? My grocery store was key food. Like I had to take the train to go like to go to Trader Joe's and do all that stuff, which is I couldn't access like real quality, you know what I'm saying? That's true. In my hood. Where you where live. I live uptown. But now yeah. like I have I have one, two, three Trader Joe's around me. I have Whole Foods around me. I live I pretty much I live in Soho. Right, you rich. You know who lives yeah. in Soho? But here's the thing. But that's the, that's what I'm talking about, right? So those people don't have access to that. So they they get have access to what's around them. Right. Yeah, they also have true. families. You have they don't know and get, They're also the ones who have to go mad far to work because nobody is working in that in that area. They got to go far to get to the to get to the jobs, and then they got to commute back to get to where they live. So like, it's a much more complex issue than like, oh yeah, this person is not trying to eat healthy because they don't want to. It's like, right, it's not set up right. Life is hard. Yeah. It's the system. The system is spoiled essentially, and so there's no easy answer. The system is spoiled is. if. If you're poor, it's working yeah, very, you're, very well. If yeah. you are not necessarily, late. right? So think about That's it this way, right? So let's say, well, in terms of healthcare, right? So if you're poor, right? If you're X percent below the federal minimum wage or the minimum wage, in, I mean, poverty level federally or poverty level in your specific state, right? You qualify for a lot of federal resources, right? So mm -hmm. if you're a pregnant woman, yeah. if the child, you get like 
you get Medicaid, you know, you're eligible for a lot of federal resources so that you get food stamps, so that plus, you know, whatever else you get from the yeah. state, you're probably doing okay, right? You don't have a lot of amenities, maybe wherever you live or access to fresh foods, but you're probably doing okay, right? If you're employed, right, you have a nice job, 401k plan, good benefits, you work for whatever, a big company, you work for the city or the state, you're probably doing okay, right? If you're privately employed, doing really successful, you make a lot of money, you're doing okay, right? Who, people who, People who get screwed the most, actually, people who make decent money but work on your own. Say you're a gig worker, right? Say you're a contractor. You or like a waitress or something planner. like that. Event planner, yeah. you make like seventy grand a year, eighty grand a year. It's good money, but you have to once you once you pass all your money, you're going to pay for health insurance and X thing and X that X thing, and you get taxed. You're just kind of getting screwed, to be honest. So it's like the small independent worker who makes who's not poor enough to like qualify for, for government aid, but not rich enough to afford expensive healthcare or other, or, or other things, right? So, so I think those are the I eat the yeah. middle class, so to speak. Yeah. Middle okay. class, bro. This, Yo, this, uh, as, 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 a, as a sidebar, I, I was talking to Nadim yesterday, um, the mom, um, well, I forget what, what the mom's name is anyway. Um, and you know, like the husband had a stroke, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Eugene. And so we were talking last night. I just called her. Um, and she was essentially just saying like how hard it is being in middle class and having doing healthcare. Like it's like it's like if they were super poor, like this would not be an issue. Like it's hard taking care of him financially being in middle class. So like that I mean it happened last night, so it's still fresh in my mind. I was like, Man, this all sucks. Like, you know, let's be in that situation because we had a stroke and she's like you know, if there was healthcare for everybody, like regardless of where you are, it'd be different. But right now, it's like it's messed up for her. Anyway, healthcare, was, man. healthcare uh, yeah. is a business, man. Oh, yeah, it completely is. It it really is. It's a whole. It's a whole. It's not a scam, but the scam. <laughs> you know, I, I can't tell you how much my surgeries cost. Like I can't tell how much it costs, right? I, I know I do it. Yeah. Um, I can can you imagine price. doing a service that you have no idea how much your service is costing somebody? I don't know how much it costs, right? <laughs> yeah. If I was to like, let's say I was in private practice and I sent you a bill, let's say I did a new replacement, right? I might send you a bill for say $4,500. Like, you know what? That new replacement cost me $4,500 of my time to do it. And that's how much I'm going to bill, ch charge you for it. Medicare would say, no, we're going to pay you $1,500. That's it. Take it or leave it. $1,500, boom. And then all the insurers will say that's the Medicare price. Boom, you get fifteen hundred dollars for that thing, and that's and that's what it is, you know. Yeah. So it's so Medicare you're saying a lot of the prices for services, you know, and insurers base their prices based on Medicare. So whatever I bill you isn't what you actually pay. If you have insurance, right? Because insurance companies will haggle, haggle, eventually they'll haggle it down, and your office is going back and forth, and you have no say in a thing. But then if you have to ask me, how much, it, how much does this episode of care cost, right? How much does it, would it cost you for a new replacement to come into the hospital, to spend the night and all this stuff? I don't freaking know. Because Kaiser oh, might really? charge you something, you know, whatever new person would charge you something else. And the, the crazy thing is Kaiser and NYP don't know what the other person is charging. Can you imagine? If you're shopping for a car, right? You, you go to dealership A, dealership B, you're like, that's how much it costs, I'm going to go to dealership B. In healthcare, you have no fucking clue. It's a, it's a black box until you get the service, and then you're like, here's yeah. the bill. It's the you, you can't you can't negotiate on the front end usually. Man, yeah. I, I realized that hospitals were scammy. It's when scammy, yo. It's scammy. I went into the hospital. They did an EKG on me, and they're like, okay, we'll just we'll send you the bill or whatnot. Mm -hmm. And that time, I, I just changed my role to per diem where I don't have benefits, so I'm depending solely on Samantha. And so the bill came back. That shit was $200. I literally could do an EKG in two minutes. So you're telling me two minutes of my time was worth $200. You know what I'm saying? Mean, That's just a small it's example. The, 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 it's not necessarily, the, it's not even, the cost is not for the EKG paper, right? It's or even for even the tech who did the EKG. It's for the cardiologist who reads the results of the EKG, right? So the cardiologist charges a fee to read the EKG results. And how many minutes does that take? The EKG, the EKG machine, 
and because you like you know they're paying for the tech to put the leads on you and all their stuff, right? So it's 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 weird. Like you probably they, they bundled a, a few different fees: the cardiologist fee, and then the hospital fee into that AKG price, and then it's twenty dollars. I mean, I think the main right, point you know, that like that you have a service that you're being charged for, but you don't know how much it costs until after it's already been done, and you just get a mystery bill. That's crazy. that's bullshit. And and and, and, and it's crazy. in America where they you know they claim it to, that they love capitalism, and free markets, and blah blah blah. That's clearly clearly in heavy favor, right, of of the business operator, and it shits on the consumer. Oh, Whether it's the sure. consumer directly being having to pay for the service or the insurance company paying for the service on behalf of the consumer, like it's a it's a it's a real fucking scam. That's for sure. That's bullshit. So so the key ticket we're here is guys. We have to buy houses around, around hospitals. That's the key ticket. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Bring it back. Wait a minute, back. Problem yeah. solved, right? Well done. Well done. Y'all see y'all see how it's a scam that you get a mystery price when you have a service that you need it. And you uh, weren't told what the price was, but you don't see how it's a scam when someone gives you death stare because you don't want to tip them X amount of money for something you agreed to pay X amount on. Your death stare can't end your life though. Like, <laughs> the hospital can kill you. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I understand that. I'm just saying, uh, like it doesn't it doesn't make any sense to me. You should be able to be upfront about your pricing. I think that's fair. I think we all can agree on that. Like the market dictates what your price is, or you dictate what your price is against the market, and then we agree. Or if we don't, we don't agree. But don't be don't be mad because I don't want to give you twenty percent, which I still will anyway because I'm uh, uh, surrounded by people who call me cheap if I don't give you more than what you asked for. But anyway, right. you know, as an aside, as an aside, do you guys ever feel like you have to tip more because you're black? Yes, I do. No, I feel like I'm tipping on behalf of my race. I, I, I do this all the time, yo. So I just, yo, I'm out here, twenty five percent, thirty percent, like dang, man. Struggle, the shackles bro. around me. I tip hard. <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> Ramaz always got the poignant, uh, the poignant ad. No, I, 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 I generally, I, I generally go like minimum, but if someone does a really good job, I'll go extra and I'll write what I liked about it. Okay. So wow. I, I, yeah, because I mean that's. That's the whole point, right? It's like, hey, you like the tip is you did a great job. Thank you. It's not just a like I'm obligated to do this because you don't get paid well enough. You should take that up with your boss, not me. No, I'm I, I don't I uh, understand the tipping more. I just the writing out like what it was that you like, like a like a like a like feedback a, a report card or review, like feedback, like immediate Yelp for a, a waitress or a waiter. I think that was interesting. But um, the point of it, right? Like. Yeah, I mean it is. It probably it'll probably I mean, make one, them more money in the long run. For sure. One thing, one thing though. One thing I did when I was wilding out in my San Francisco days, I would tip the people at like Nordstrom for like being, bringing me like a hell of stuff to try on, and sometimes just to like flirt. Because they they don't they don't normally get tipped. <laughs> just to flirt. <laughs> did it did it work? Yeah, it did. <laughs> oh my gosh, thank God. Shicey, bro. Shicey. My whole 20s. Man. You guys were there. <laughs> we were Yo, really I, 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 I went to Chuck. We were Chuck with some, some club uh, in the marina. This is when Chuck was in the phone then. I don't know what club this was. And we're trying to get in. Oh, no, you can't get in. Right? That out. <laughs> <laughs> went to, yo, we went to the bouncer, truck pulled out 100, get the bouncer. Like, yo, can we get in? <laughs> and we just slid right in. I was like, truck, what, what are you doing? We just leave. You did not need to get in. A 20 would have worked. A 20. <laughs> like, he just like, give me 100. I'm like, truck, man, you're here flexing. Flexing hard. <laughs> but a 20 is memorable. A hundred dollars is insane. A hundred dollars, like, ooh. Uh, Next time. But you'll get in. And I never like, had to pay again. Uh, I guess. That's like, it's a down payment. It's a down right. payment on future visits. <laughs> I, I paid them ago. both. <laughs> Definitely went there at least five times. For I sure. got I got the annual price right. instead of the monthly subscription. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you, smart. <laughs> All right, let's look at a few properties. Oh um, yeah. This is like the first one. I just I I don't truly understand what's going on with this one here. Sam snacks. Yeah, that's Damn, first. I, that's that's a negative, bro. <laughs> I know. What? 
Look at the driveway. Yeah, like, the, that's known for commercial <laughs> space. <laughs> it's it's multi use. Multi- 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 that's a duplex. The f- I, you know what? Okay, I was wondering if this was some sort of you know. Um, Let's have make our logo. Illicit <laughs> uh, street pharmaceutical operation. Mm, that's and then I'm we- looking at it. Uh, and I was looking at what was I looking at? I wasn't looking at. Oh yeah, the rents it's are sorry. are so we're above. I believe we're above the um one percent rule. If one of them is five fifty, right? That's a thousand. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, great. Thousand. thousand that's a thousand. Oh, yeah, 1100. So that's well yeah. over. Oh. But my issue here is when I was looking at the uh, property history, this, what is this about? It sold for 1.1? 1. 1? No. Do you see this? Hey. Somebody's running a laundromat here. What? It was probably in a group of, a big group of uh, sales. Like they bought a bunch of buildings and this was listed on. Oh, okay. That makes me feel better. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, I don't know about yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> When even it wouldn't be one million, bro. You gotta look at. Well, I mean, if, if you bought like ten properties that were all hundred thousand, then there's your million. They they don't break it out on the. Or the sensor. land or land. Oh, they don't break it down in the. Uh, nah, it's just the sale of, of ten properties. Especially, I mean, I don't know how sophisticated Memphis's yeah, county see, assessor is, but they ain't gonna do, do all that work. Old yeah, it does say block offers. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that makes me feel better. But this one, you see it's like 55 or something. What's, um, what's it surrounded by? How did other houses look around it? Uh, uh, yeah, please say it. Uh, let me look. Uh, there's a thing. Because that looks ugly from the outside, to be honest, if that's an indication. Um, here. I mean, we do have to consider like the area. If it's like that sucky spot in a nice area, then that that's what I'm saying. If the other houses around it look pretty decent, yeah. then maybe this is just the outlier. I can just make this one look nicer. Look at all this space unused. I know. It's like building other What thing. is that about? Uh, this looks pretty dingy. It's kind of a, it looks like industrial almost in this part of the Yeah, industrial. Yeah. It's like what a baby used to look like. Yeah. Oh, shit. That was the thing, uh, that was interesting you said, because um, I can, when you were talking about, uh, when you were talking about up and coming neighborhoods, I was reminded that uh, yeah. I was in Bayview yesterday, I was on Third Street, and I saw like uh, a white family, <laughs> two little kids with the backpack straps, with the leash, like the collar, like the, I was like, what is happening? This is on Third Street. I was like, <laughs> That's the up and coming neighborhood. There used to be murders going on there, murders. Yeah. And they were like, Bro, this is the thing. They were like cross. This is by like the post office in the Walgreens on. I can't remember what street it's on. Third and anyway, it's like Third Street by the post office, and like they're crossing the street. I'm like, it's already dangerous that you guys are here, but you're yeah. you're having your baby, your four year old baby, play around in the middle of the street to get to the, like the railway. I'm like, what is happening? I looked to the car next to me. The car next to me was a hoopty with somebody in it. It was hella loud music, and they were looking at me too. I was like, this is weird, bro. This is very weird. <laughs> but this is the uh, building here. It's a barbershop on this side, and then Sam Snacks on the other side. I don't know what's going on with this building, bro. It's supposed to be a duplex. Yeah. But you see this? Yeah. It looks like somebody's running a side business as well out of this one. Um, yeah. But uh, actually, guys, this is this seems like a commercial spot, right? The commercial real estate. It looks like it. Yeah. So and how long is? Yeah, is my is thought it, is how long is it? Residential it? property. If they're running some stuff out of it, like is it? A com, is it a commercial? They're doing it illegally. Yeah. If they are. But honestly, if it's well, first of all, if it's commercial, like how long is your lease? Because if it's like a three-year, four-year lease, like honestly, it's not crazy to to be in that. And what? Because it's, I mean, it's it's set, it's stable. We can ask, but it was in 1947. It's been on for how many months is this? Three, four? Four months. Four yeah. Months and six days. Uh, flood factor is three out of 10. I don't know what FEMA zone means, but that scares me. FEMA zone is the flood thing. <laughs> okay. Anything, anytime I ever hear FEMA, it's never been good in my whole life. Bro. <laughs> um, <laughs> medium noise, I don't know what that means either. Uh, September? 
No. But uh, this one, I mean, it could be the. It seems like it has a story, but. Like honestly, I'd say if, if it's if it's if it's running as a grocery store and a barbershop, there's no way it's like inhabitable for like living. You'd have to do yeah, like, it'll take heavy renovation. Yeah, you have to make it, it into money. facilities. You know, Man, this is not something we want for we would want for our first property. You know what I'm saying? Nah, nah, like, nah, nah. You know what I'm saying? So, okay. Not to say that I I wouldn't consider it like for house number six, seven, and turn that whole thing around and like build like a duplex. Oh, there. Shit. Yeah, exactly. Or a fourplex. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to check the economics on that because I, I don't know if I mentioned to, to you guys, but on the land that my fourplex is on, there's enough space for another fourplex. But based on the rules and the place is actually zoned industrial, it's like zoned commercial. So I could build theoretically whatever I wanted if I want to. Rent but, out stores, yeah. Right. But the way that uh, the so finances that. work and the city works, it it's unaffordable. It doesn't make sense yeah. to do so. Like I would lose money. Yeah doing it, which is stupid, yeah. but it still means like you, just because there's space doesn't automatically mean that you can build on it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. that's a good point. This is more like I, I, I spent months, I was like, can I, I was like, okay, what if I, the, cause the economics on it to build another four place would cost like 400K, which just wouldn't make sense. And I'm like, okay, what if I split the, split the, the yeah, split the lot. <laughs> But then if I split the lot, it's basically I would have to like refi first and then split the lot, which is an extra 20000 to do. And then, or if I worked on, if I leveled it completely and then built up, like, uh, then the permits on that would be 15 k to start. And it's not automatically a guarantee that I'll be able to build up. And then I'd have to figure out the lending costs plus the note I still have on the house and then make that work. So the end, the end, basically like the end results would have to be within a year and the value pro of the property would have to be 800,000 for me to break even. So it's like, just because there's space doesn't mean, I'm still trying to figure out what, like if I got to put storage sheds there or what, like to make it work. Laundry man. The laundry man's a cash heavy business. Well, first of all, I need, I need to build a structure, but it's a, I don't want to do any like day-to-day um, -day, like man, money. Yeah. yeah. True. This is in a sack? Yeah, it's insane. Um, this one I like because I, again I think it reaches the one percent. It's four seventy three plus four fifty. Yeah, the issue though is that this one is eighty thousand, where the other one was fifty five. So um, it's okay. Uh, I can't remember why else this was something of interest. This is weird. I guess Google Maps hasn't made it there. It probably made it there, but something's not rendering. I go look. Let's just look for it. Hey Chuck, what's your thoughts on multifamilies in Memphis? And the demand there. Any thoughts? Yeah, man, I haven't seen too many like fourplexes. Um, there's a couple of duplexes here and there, but generally, like big apartments are all kind of in like bad neighborhoods. One thing that you will see, um, I just seen like a couple pockets where like, um, I don't know if y'all have seen uh, Ike's property, but he's got like this fourplex within. A community of fourplexes. I don't even know what you would call that. It's like yeah, it's like it was, it was like a planned development of of like sixteen fourplexes in a gated community, but they're, all the fourplexes are sold separately. Wow, bro, that looks that's not good. This doesn't look desirable, no. Um, and I think this is the property here. With this. It's it was never a good idea to buy a Dodge Neon, but this Dodge Neon is in trouble. <laughs> so I'll probably mix this one. But um, it's not horrible. I mean, it's better than Sam Snacks. That's true. I like Sam Snacks, to be honest. <laughs> I think that we. I was wondering about a commercial property. 
or like running, I don't think it's necessarily that bad to have a business because they pay more in rent than like residential. But I think that like Sam Snacks is illegal. Like I'm pretty sure. And the barbershop is illegal. Illegal for sure. And I don't want to have to deal with that. Like, especially for the first uh, property. Yeah. This thing needs a lot of work. I also think it's a drug house, if I'm honest. Yeah. And I feel like the person that's selling them is affiliated, but. Um, this one, this one is, I think it's this property right here, which is right away a little over here. I don't know if that's our driveway or the other people's What's the square footage on this place? Um, I'll look and see. It's like tiny. It looks slow. It's like the, also the smallest one. This is not the worst neighborhood though. Yeah, this looks more organized. I might need to just get one of these and put it in the, on my open land. What is that? It's like a, sure. like a canteen. Uh, Is that right? Did I say that right? Uh, like a storage unit? Mm. But this one needs a lot of work. Well, it doesn't need a lot of work. It needs paint and like floors. a new floor, floors, windows. windows. I, some Never appliance is supposed to be here for sure. Yeah. Oh, God. That's probably a washer or sink or something. Uh, dishwasher. This honestly doesn't look that bad on the inside. Toilet. It's weird. I don't know what this is. I don't know what the room this is. Um, it looks like the structure is actually really nice, but it just needs like it's five thousand square feet, almost six thousand. Yeah. That was a lot. But that's that, yeah, a lot. That's a lot. Sold for twenty three k two years ago. It's been on for almost a week. <laughs> A reduced, also a duplex. What is what was the rent here? One bedroom and bath. What? Five per month. <laughs> what? I can't imagine that in 2020 somebody's paying less than three hundred dollars. Five. Professionally managed with um, estimated market rates at four hundred. So it's the person has already lived so there. There's a tenant years, already in there, and they bought it in 2018. What did they do to this property to make it worth thirty thousand dollars more than what they bought it for? Nothing. That's my question. Nothing. Nothing. Sit here, sold. <clears throat> this is something whereby we could probably lowball them or at least get a cheaper price than what they're offering. I don't know that they should make any money on like on the sale of this. What is better? Oh, it's 34. Okay, that was 50 for some reason. It says there's already there's already a tenant in there. Do not disturb tenant in one of them. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure it out. It says Interior inspection rentals. Yeah, I don't, don't get that either. Feet. Like the tenants paying two forty five a month. Damn. It sounds like it's not going anywhere. And then you're saying you can get up to three fifty to four hundred per month per side. You got, I mean, the guy was there for six years and just gonna roll over and just give you extra hundred bucks just because you asked for it. I think the the impl implication there is that you're gonna get new tenants in and and get rid of the guy that's been there for six years. But still, like, so if so, we're talking about three hundred fifty dollars to four hundred dollars a month. Um, multiply that by, you know, three twelve hundred dollars a month is what the person is supposed to be making. So this person, you know, is making about thirty thousand a year. What sort of job are they getting in that area for that for that you know kind of money? And like, is that the sort of tenant that we want to be dealing with? Is somebody that's that can only afford to pay four hundred dollars a month? Because yeah, they're paying less in, in rent, but they're paying the same price in food and other living expenses that other people have to pay. So we're going to be dealing with a lot of you know money issues from a tenant perspective at four hundred dollars a month if we were able to get that with this property. Yeah, I think oh, the, the one bedroom, one bath thing significantly limits who can actually live there, like the, the tenant type mm -hmm. and the mix of people who can live there. Like a single be somebody that's like like much. trend exactly Tr single dude transient jobs, not necessarily having a solid income that you can you know expect to come in every couple of weeks or every week or whatever. Probably not the best tenant history, so we, ha we we basically would have to underwrite you know a lot more occupancy issues when we do the math on the place. Yeah. Um, how do you do uh, fine? There's 18 of them. We're, we're going to look at maybe two more though. Yeah. 
There's like two more that I thought were interesting. Um, is it this one? Yeah, I thought this one was interesting. 50K. Uh, all exterior photos. There's a pro though in that they're all in our price range. Um, let's see. Bro, this looks like back in time. Uh, I think it's this one. This looks like Oof. <laughs> there's no Chevy in policy. Uh, this is. Uh, that break, to be honest. Uh, let's see. Um, break two bedroom, one bath, duplexes, occupied. So this is this is another one where the dude has, um, or not the dude, the owner has a package of probably four. Uh, Cash offers only. Sorry, so it's all those houses side by side, the ones that are right next to them. Yeah. So they look all similar and stuff. Uh, is there a way we could easily figure this out? Identify these. Oh, no. So it has the MLS. Property history. Damn. How do you go from 10,000 all the way to? No, that's the, um, oh, property tax. That's the property tax. Uh, this one doesn't have as, as, as much information as I thought I had. Or I would have liked. Uh, let's move on to the next one. This one doesn't tell us the rents, it just says fully occupied. 70k. Okay, yeah. 70k. Um, like you guys, currently running at 600 combined. So it's under. Jeez. It's under the one percent rule. Even though market rent says it's still still be under the market rule. Oh, we just at the one percent rule. Um, if they were at market rent, uh, which are what? These are two bed, two bedroom. No, one bedroom, one baths. Um, let me photo this look at the, the... Honestly, I think the first like three or four were the only, the best ones. And these are, they're like, okay, they fall in our price range, but. Yeah, the previous one I don't think was crazy. So it was, it was three units next to each other, two beds, one bath um, at 50K. The one this, right before uh, this one. This one? Uh, was it? Yeah, this one, right? I Man, I think this is. I don't think this is particularly crazy, to be honest. Well, we don't know the price of the rent. It just, says, it just says it's two bedroom, one bath, duplex, and it's hundred percent occupied. But and they and they want a cash offer only, and they don't say how much the rents are. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it doesn't say how much rents are. But it doesn't really tell us. Um, uh, if the juice is worth the squeeze. And then looking at the property, uh, the, the the area it looked in looked like no one cared about their life, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to shit on Memphis, but shit. <laughs> well, I mean, this is a particular area. There's, there's, you know, there's neighborhoods where all of us live where it's like wild. But like, this is the yeah. property here. I mean, the cars are washed, it looks like. Yeah, never mind. I, I see the saying. That's that. What's it called? The quarter final panel? The door where you gotta just just pretty much over with that car. And then there's this. That's pretty much, I mean, this is yeah. Yeah. Um let's do one more look. 54, so basically 55k. This one looks a bit is uh one last thing breaks and offers. Yeah, this one doesn't have any information, really. Except for that, uh, the person has held it for 14, 14 years. Damn, son. They got no, played. No, no, right no, yeah, what? <laughs> what happened here? Somebody bought an 05 and flipped it to them for double, yeah, and they got also, played. And they um, finally yeah. can make their money back. Finally. <laughs> it's fucked up. Yeah, this person just wants to get out of this. <laughs> exactly. They didn't even say anything about it. Just say long lasting brick in here. Let's go. Get out. They got caught in the wrong. The hot potato burned their hands. What happened? 
<laughs> it's been on for a while too. They don't want to uh, acknowledge that it's probably not worth even the 54 dollars mm -hmm. It's been on the market for 150 days. Come on, man. Lower yeah. that price. What are you doing? Lose 2000 They're not serious. You could probably talk to this person very nicely and they would just give up the property. Probably. What is this? Google Maps. Yeah, that's the woods, son. What is happening? Where is that? Oh, no. Is it here? Maybe it's underground. <laughs> Right. I think this is the house here. I don't think you can go up the street. Is that why? Oh, here it is. It looks like it's is it on the corner? Yeah, it's this one. Look at all this land. This is what I don't understand. A lot of land, yeah. Yeah, can you build on that? Oof. Oh, it looks so, like um, someone lives in there. That's the van from Kendrick Lamar's uh, that he wouldn't <laughs> give back to his, uh, um, his auntie. But, uh, this is pretty much it. This is the only pictures they have. Look at the house that, to the right. Though. That, this that one, looks. This one's kept. Nice, like, yeah. That looks somewhat so. uh, I think This might be a single family. Yeah, I think it's probably owned by this person that, that, that lives there. Yeah. Um, but it's a house on the corner next to like an alleyway, which mine is next to my current property is next to an alleyway, which is like, okay, but I would rather not because mm -hmm. like a lot of things can happen in that alley. And while you're the only house there, like I'm the only landowner there. I share it with like people who live down the alleyway, but like, it's not technically my land. So I can't like corner it off or anything, but when it gets dirty or looks nuts, it's sort of on me and not really want anybody else to deal with it. Like this area right here, like all of this. Yeah, they just drop garbage. It's just opportunity for bad stuff to happen, yeah. basically. Uh, let's leave it one more and then you be out. Whoa, this house is haunted for sure. <coughs> That's gonna require a lot of work. Skip looks like it's sinking to the left. 1922. Yeah, it looks like it was underwater. 1922 is a hundred years old, right? About. Forty-seven thousand. Um, yeah, it's gonna require way more work. Something's up. It looks good on the inside. Yeah. Though. Why was it? Why did it look so easy? On the outside, it looks like it's rotting. But it's like it's been last before. last sold four hundred and fifty k. Almost a year. That was probably part of the There's got to be something structurally wrong with it. So this fully rented duplex rents at four fifty per side, so it's destroying the one percent rule. Um, each side is rented until spring of 2021. Uh, could be a great resist addition to portfolio. No showings without accepted offers. Many repairs have been made. You didn't tell us which ones. Sellers can close quickly. I, I don't get this. Let me look at the history a little bit because. Huh? That's probably the same thing. Like, yeah, it's probably a package. Oh, okay. Seems like it has popularity. It was listed two years ago for uh, 26,000, then taken off and then come back with 47,000. What was the market two years ago in Memphis that things are listed at 20,000 in 2018? These pictures are not telling me much. It's a four out of 10 for flood zone, something, something. Nice neighborhood. Yeah, neighborhood. At least on this day, it's glass. Is this real grass? Nah. Looks like fun. This is a real tree. This person cares, except for his part, but. Something's up. Why? I mean, these are, that's a well kept hedges right there. Five or seven. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, area. I think. What's going on? Maybe that's why. Maybe this this is why. What happened here? Who got popped here? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like they just built something. This is this is a, a murder tape, is it not? Caution. 
Well, you can buy that Ace Hardware, though. <laughs> well, this is the house. I'm not even mad at this property, to be honest. It, it looks fine. I just, I'm, I'm just w- wondering what's wrong with it. Because for the rent that it's getting, you would think it would be, be listed for much more. I think it's the smallest one here again in the neighborhood. Good. Needs a new paint job, but that's about it. On the on the outside, so they could match its neighbors. It's brick though, so you don't have to paint it if you don't want to. You got a uh, power washer. Yeah, power washer. Yeah. Um, it looks like uh, we have a church. Um, uh, this is village apartments. You have another church. <laughs> that's par from Memphis. Par for the course, I guess. Hold on, we had um, an auto service like mechanic, I guess. Yeah, churches all over the place, man. Yeah. Bro, there's five churches within five blocks. <laughs> Competition is real. Yeah. There's a deli, market in a deli. There's a family dollar store. So we're looking at probably a C, C neighborhood, C minus, C, C minus, C minus, C plus. There's a uh, there's a library across the track, which is which is you know, which is good. I mean, across, a there's a Hollywood across Press Avenue. There was a library, Hollywood Library. I think that's a good sign for the neighborhood. Bro, do you remember the library downtown? <laughs> but at least it just means at least there's a there's a central point for I guess <laughs> social activity. You know, like community organizing. All, all the churches are for it, right? True. <laughs> It's a lot of autos and churches. So, um, how many Baptists and all Baptist churches, bro? Like, you think Messiah Missionary Baptist Church has beef with Golden Leaf Baptist Church? Church is chicken. (laughs) (laughs) Missionary Baptist. Uh, New First Baptist Trinity Nation. There's so many churches. There's so many churches. Christian Fellowship Baptist. Jesus Christ. Tax free. I wanted to see where do you guys see where um that um that uh grocery store is? I lost it. There's the father with fish market oh, and food and groceries. I want to take a look if we can. And this is what you can. You know, this is not a bad, a ba- I think this is probably going to be like the prototypical neighborhood we will find. Yeah. It's like a working part. class neighborhood. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's, I mean, that's a good thing, it's working class. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, part of like, East Oakland, you know? Yeah. Uh, is a Keith? Oh, there's a, yeah, there's a KIPP school close by. You know, those KIPP academies, those are charter schools, you know? Oh, okay. It's supposedly pretty decent. Which means it's, uh, yeah, it may not be the best of best neighborhoods. What Kip? This neighborhood? Uh, because they usually go to like struggling neighborhoods to help, like public schools and stuff like that. You don't really find them in really nice neighborhoods. Okay, but yeah, that's already established though. This is a it's this is certainly s- s- firmly working class. Here goes our center, our health center. Oh, it's Planned Parenthood. Oh. <laughs> in the middle of a whole bunch of churches. Yeah, Sonic Drive. Yeah, Chipotle. No, can't buy here. Sonic is terrible. Yo, ch- Chick fil A, Chipotle, our best steak house. But I'm left. Oh, it's getting popping right here. Yeah. Um, it feels like that East Park North is like a, sort of the divider of neighborhoods. Yeah. Like a large street like that. Yeah. Okay. The, what was the spot at? Uh, Hyde, Hyde Park? What neighborhood was this in? This neighborhood is Hollywood. Uh, Hollywood. Hollywood seems like good, I think. Hollywood. Okay. Let's take it. I like the name. I mean, it's not a, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not even for a working class neighborhood, it looks real to be well clipped, at least this block of it. Yeah. it I agree. We could, I like it. we could start this one. I'm, I'm the to it. Come from? That's the question. Where do the jobs come from? Well, let's look again. I mean, they could afford to pay for landscaping or do it themselves. Memphis, this is kind of far from downtown. This is North Memphis. I got to listen to more uh, Yo Gotti and um, yeah, Dog, so I know uh, more about <laughs> Memphis. 
I think North it's Memphis dope. is the hood, though. Yeah, North Memphis is the hood, I'm sure. But as long as it's cash flowing, I mean, I don't, I'm not against yeah. buying the hood. Like, I think that uh, long term, we could do a lot for like, bro. Just imagine if we had areas. like three blocks, like literally just own three blocks, and then we'd start influencing like what type of you know businesses come to that area. Game changer. Um, but yeah, we can look at one more 65k. That green one, yeah, oh, that, that looks nice. Yeah, 65k. Went for 1.1 million, probably in a package, either that or they wash some drug money. But either way, it's fine. Property details, tenant occupied, do not disturb. Um, rents are just under a thousand. That's not bad. That's not bad. That's not bad. Uh, some seller strongly prefers bulk. We may do that and just like deal with this, like, you know, a seller and then they know us. Mm -hmm. Just keep feeding you houses. Um, probably history, still here. So probably sold in the package twice and then listed for 65. These are consistent two year, probably a down market in that uh, 18, 19 time. Um, what else do we want to look at? We want to look at the what it looks like today. No, I'm looking near our flood zones, one out of 10. Yeah. Oh, please help me. This is a spot. Okay. I'm not at all mad. Okay. Well kept that. lawns, well paved street, wider streets, by the way. Mm -hmm. My man, we need so, a fence up here, though. Yeah, we like get, this. Yeah. Or make it a car park, a car, what's it called? Port park? You can't do that, huh? Because of the curve. Or, I mean, it, seem, it seems like the street parking is like not an issue. There's so much of it that I don't know if it's going to add any value. It doesn't look like anybody parks in like, it's just space. Okay, let's um, see if we can. Oh. <laughs> what is the other angle in front of it? This one? Yeah, the front. No. Oh, you want to see the front of the house? Yeah. That was solid. They only had one picture, too. Yeah, they only had one picture because it's tenant occupied. Oh. It's just cash flowing. Oh, so that's the driveway already. Is what was the list? Six five. Should we put in an offer at like fifty five? See what they say. Let's All right, Adrian. So let's you know, do it. let's do it. <laughs> What's around? Old school. Look, you see, old school Benz. We're going to that big body Benz. Let's that appreciate that for two minutes. Two minutes. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> is this a big yeah. body Benz? It might be the big body. body. Yeah, I can't see it. That old that throwback. Yo, that that car, man. <laughs> Generations of Nigerians, B. I'm telling you. <laughs> you, you go to Bro, Nigerian party in the 90s, the whole parking lot is that car. Bro. Bro. There's Mercedes and Volvos. It's the Volvos. Yeah, Mercedes and Volvos. Yeah. What happened to Volvos? We single handedly kept them afloat. What did they Bro. do? <laughs> I swear. The Swedes. Wait, hold on. Let me see if we can see Google Maps. Do what I asked you. How long has it been on market? Uh, oh, let me check what right quick. I want to see if we can see what's on the side of this building. Oh, we can't. Like these pipes, these exterior pipes. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, uh, a, a while. Four months. What'd you say, Ramat? You see something wrong with the pipes already? No, no, no. I was, <laughs> I was just uh, <laughs> looking to see how accessible they are. You guys oh, think I'm good. I am not. Like, dang, how, how good are you with pipes? <laughs> I'm excellent with pipes at this point. But, like, you see how it's raised, so, like, you can get under. Okay. I think that's part of the, like, flood zone or, like, precaution there. But but what's uh, bothering me is, like, this is exposed. Like, you could tamper with this pretty easily. That's the power. So this is, uh, you know, unit A, unit B power, basically. 
Um, and then uh, the pipes are seems to be on this side. I just want to see them to see because it looks like it's coming out of the ground and into one unit and then out of the ground. If, if this is a unit here and this is a unit here, I don't know how the other one is working to going under. I care about things like this deeply. Mm. This, one, Deep. <laughs> this house kind of bothers me a little bit uh, just because it doesn't look like um, they care. Um, but all I mean, the there's, already ten, there's already tenants in place. So, I mean, if, if they're leased through, you know, the next six to nine months, that gives us a time to deal with all the, the details. Yeah. I don't, I don't necessarily mind this property. I do like the fire hydrant here. Um, what's, the, what's the rent on this one? Does it say? Uh, 450 and 495. It's over 1% for sure. I think you're grossing like, uh, just under a thousand. Gotcha. Like just under. And then, um, what else did we want to look at? Oh, I want to look at the uh, like surrounding areas. We have a church down the street. Um, I just see a whole bunch of churches. A grocery store. A grocery store here. But Yon's grocery might be like a good grocery store. Uh, we got more churches. Just churches. Hell of churches, bro. We got a supermarket. Where? Choose King Supermarket. King Supermarket. Choose 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 King Churches. I don't see any of those big, those big areas. That is this the same Hollywood area? It's close to it. Yeah, oh, it's close to it. It's, it's closer to like Hollywood downtown, though. It looks like. Yeah. yeah. Downtown is like uh, down to the left there, or to the yeah. west. Uh, yes, yeah, so this is what Hyde Park. Hyde yeah. Park, which is probably like kind of like the adjacent, probably. Yeah. Memphis Zoo. Yeah, it looks like the big attraction is Memphis Zoo. There's a whole district for medical. I don't understand what that means. Oh, One Health Medical Center. It's like this quote unquote modern type oh, okay. of like medicine, but it never really took off. Rhodes College. Uh, I mean, it's basically the same area as the other ones. Family Dollar Store. St. Teresa Little Flower. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't mind this one. Oh, Kroger, that's a that's a store, right? Home Depot. Yeah. Where's Home Depot? To the right of it, bottom. There's like a whole little like mall ish uh, GameStop, Kroger there again, Starbucks, Dunkin'. Starbucks? Yeah. Wait, so, wait, where is our property? Oh, our property is property's like people. north of that, though. Uh, yeah. Property is that Overtown so Park or Overton <laughs> Park seems to separate yeah, that's like far. that more affluent area. It's but I think we're going to end up purchasing like in this region. But Honestly, think if you, I mean, that area, the Central Gardens area, downtown is probably where the jobs are going to be for the people that we rent to. So the proximity doesn't have to be walking distance, but it's going to be oh, probably but, accessible. Yeah. I, I doubt the pricing for University of Memphis is in our bracket. Is there a way to do that where you could like uh, circle the area. on Redfin, you could. Okay, yeah, right. on our on what's a Zillow, you can just search by zip code. So if you just click on zip code for the medical district. Oh, on Zillow, you said. Yeah, you can search by zip code on Zillow. So let me put it on. You just need a zip uh -huh. code. The Uh, I'm trying to see now. Just type in medical district Memphis. It didn't pop up. Oh, really? Uh, it popped up in my mind on Zilla. 
Um, Zillow? Yeah, yeah, give me one second. Yeah, let me just, uh, it did. just type in Medical District, Memphis, Tennessee, and they have a whole bunch of things clustered in that area. Try 38112, zip code, 38112. 38112? Yeah. Oh, yes, oh, your second, oh, your second line, never mind. I didn't look here. I don't know. 38. Yeah, try that guy. Yeah, try that guy. Yeah. 15 homes. Woo! Yeah. Oh, buddy. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. Let's see, let's see. This is where yeah. the, this is where the, <laughs> the lawyers go. Bro, you never know. Say so what, uh, owner? You know the four bikes, that last spot? What is it saying? It's not saying anything. Yo, can everybody hear me? Hello, hello? Yeah. Hey, yeah. Welcome back. Yeah, phone died. <clears throat> <laughs> Fuck. Matt, you're expensive. Nah. Cold. He can. He can at least. He can at least clear clear the brush for us. <laughs> he at least clear the brush for us. I mean, he didn't even do that. He didn't take no pictures. That's the... Is it this one? Yeah. I What's around so. it though? I mean, around it seems, you know. I don't know, man. Like, I don't know what this is about. This looks, no, nah, man. I, don't, I, don't, I mean, those corner lots. How long? Did, how how much does it take to build a, a, a property in Memphis? We're not. Yeah, we're not living. What? Well, what are you <laughs> trying to build? Our ideal is to immediately cash flow, maybe some minor things, maybe a paint job, power wash. It looks like these are all brick for some reason. Uh, and then be out. But it looks like uh, we'll be in the Hollywood or what's the other place? Hyde Park. Hyde Park. Hyde Park. Hyde Park. I like that greenhouse, to be honest. Me too. I just want to know what's on the inside, though. Outside can look beautiful, inside can look trash. Greenhouse. The greenhouse was the house is haunted. That's why I would say if, if we were to put in like a an offer at like 50k just to get inside the door and inspect it, it might be worth it. If if they well, were, to, were to accept that though, by the way, I don't think. Should be able to do that, you know, by February. Well, we have money. How much money would we have? We have enough money. Like so 20k. We should. That's enough money, and then we can yeah. have all our stuff like lined up the uh, look, and then start the relationships or introductions to lending areas. Okay. Um, but I'm gonna uh, when we get off, I'll just list all these to the, put the links all in the um, WhatsApp, and then you know all the other stuff that what. Okay, so let's round up actually. So you know what we're doing. So before our next meeting, we should have what we should have had. Um, uh, did we, we said no pictures, so website, I just go on Squarespace and write like a quick blurb about us, basically. And then we said that we would do the simple text for the logo and put this and the other meeting up on YouTube. I don't know how we want to do Instagram, to be honest. Oh, and then everybody send me a, like a, your face emoji thing, right? How do you even do that? Yeah, how do you do it? You just screenshot it. Okay. But how do you make it? Yeah. Uh, you have you don't have one? Nah. You can go <laughs> on. Um, just go to your phone number and then click on the circle. Oh, like in contacts. Yeah, contacts. Yeah. All right. Anyway, I can just Google it. Don't you don't have to worry about that. But we, I'll figure it out. Oh, wait, I did want to ask y'all, did anyone want to invite to Clubhouse? Do you guys heard about that new uh, social app? What is, what is it? No. What is it about? Oh, okay, it's, uh, I'll not explain it. It's, uh, it's a new, like, networking social app. Um, on speakerphone, that's what I just said. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah I, the, the, it's basically Twitter on speakerphone in real time. Wow. Mm -hmm. Interesting. 
But you There's can't some people find your tribe. Some interesting you... stuff, though. Like um, people are putting together like discussions on real estate development, all sorts yeah. of other stuff. It's worth checking out, I would say. Do you think that we should do it, Rob? Um, is it gaining steam like TikTok? So it's, 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 what's that again? Is it gaining steam like TikTok? Like, is it a popular social media app that's growing? Yeah, because even even Twitter is trying to replicate it with something called Spaces. So okay, so then we should probably just put a red summer holdings on that too. No. But it's more for like individuals. So like we, we would have a clubhouse discussion as Red Summer Holdings, as opposed to it's like, I don't think businesses would have an account. I think people would have accounts. I don't right. know, though, honestly. I'm we will guessing. all have to join and then we will have to start probably our own like Red Summer uh, Club and we could just talk about real estate maybe like once a week or something like that. That's one that we could do. But it is very like visualize like my tribe that I the rooms that I go to are like yoga oriented or advertising and networking and stuff like that so it's kind of everyone's like no I feel like journey on it's going to be different I just want to gauge you guys to see if, if anyone's interested before because I hear some people are selling invites on like credit for money because you can only oh, get really? in get an invite. or if you I guess oh. you can sign up and be brought in like sponsored or something. I don't. I don't know. It's weird. I'm new to it, but since I do have invite, I just want to open up to you guys first. How many invites do you have? Only have one. So once we join, I think it'll oh, take time. Can keep it. Oh, it's for all of us to get on because I think once you join, you're on for a week. You, I think you get one invite. So it'll take eight weeks. Basically, <laughs> <laughs> it, it could. I don't oh, know. Yeah. It's a new uh, y'all can look it up and like hit me up if someone wants to invite. Okay, don't sell your invite yet. <laughs> right. Okay, that's that's the that's the question. All right, got it. <laughs> oh, this is for like a lot of cash, and like I'm not even mad if you sell it because <laughs> I don't know what this thing is. Twitter on uh, it basically seems like having the same conversation I already have with the same people I already have, but on a platform. Yeah, it's basically that I'm not allowed into. It's Yes, yeah, so I'm almost having like. I'm sure it's cool. I'm just old and out of touch. I'm sure. Okay. All right. Let, let me know. Continue. All right. But is there anything else before we go? So, what's the agenda for the next meeting again? One more time. Uh, the agenda for the next meeting, I believe, is really basically just work that I got to do. And you guys send me your faces in the end of the form. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, so it's like uh, getting the logo up, putting up these two like pod slash videos that we have um, developing uh, like a landing page with like the URL uh, with a little blurb about us. And uh, that would pretty much be it. I don't know, when is the next meeting? Wow, Gina already sent me his and he's next in here. Oh, uh, you guys on? Chima already sent me his his uh his face, and he's the only one without one. <laughs> I know. But that's it done. Put that. That boy works. I like that. It's it done. It's cute. All right, but uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, just um, working on like our face, our brand at this point. And then uh, when's the next meeting? Next meeting will be like January something. January third. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, third. Uh, yeah, so I think we're good. So in terms of houses, though, so we like these two. We like the 2116 Hunter Ave in uh, Hyde Park at the Hollywood one. Is that yeah. Are we... I think we should do a third one. Too. Yeah. We just should okay. just keep looking. Yeah, we'll be ongoing looking. Yeah. And then, oh, also there's adding uh, all the things, which is like eight things. To the um, to the criteria, I think that's another thing that I'll probably do is just put the houses. We all can if we have free time and you see that it's still not done, but it's also to put maybe these next two houses in the criteria and see how they pan out, just numbers wise, just for the exercise. I think that tool is like going to be pretty important uh, ongoing. Yeah, that's, that's probably how we'll end up doing. Yeah. 
yeah, we'll get to a point where we'll just plug in like maybe two or three things and we'll know exactly what we're doing and if we're even gonna bother. Uh, there's also, um, for later, we can talk more about, I mean, it's kind of thinking farther out, but like the breakdown that we wanna provide for LPs uh, later down the line. I think what we decided before was like, you know, it's marginal to how much you put in is like the percentage you get out and just keep it straight like that. But there's also, I was listening to a podcast about a, a lady who started as an LP so that she knows what to expect um, when she becomes a GP. And I think there's value tied to that. So like understanding what it is that a limited partner would want to know and care about and starting to incorporate that into what we're doing, even if we don't have LPs yet. Thank you.